I've got three uh, fiddle bows, violin bows here, and I'm gonna just talk a little about um, why I think they're different and uh, play them a bit. This first one is uh, one of my dad's old bows. It's a pretty cheap bow. I had it um, assessed. I forget what it came out to be worth, but I think it was under 500. And just play a tune, Bright Picker Brown. It, um, the handling's okay, but the more I play it, the more I feel it bouncing a little bit. Like control-wise, it feels a little um, jittery or something. Mm -hmm. and that's really cheap bows. You get that. You get that with those sometimes. Um, you, you'll know some bows like t there's just a whole lot of space between the hair and the stick. They're just like I, I'm not sure what it is, but the stick's just not a good stick. <laughs> it doesn't have the the flex. And um, when you yeah. say that's your dad's bow. Is something that he owned or just something he made? It's something he owned, yeah. Okay. He, he has, uh, when he passed away five, five, a little over five years ago, um, you know, I got his instruments. And mm -hmm. He had a fiddle, he had two fiddles and I think two bows. I think two bows, yeah. And this was the cheap, cheaper of them, uh, or l the less good of them. Uh, this other bow is a bow I had for, I've played on for years and years and still play some, uh, at least 10 years. And uh, it's a good stick for sure. Um, and but I, I, I came to a point where I wanted something else, and I got this third bow, which I'll show in a second. Um, but this is this is a good bow. I'll play I'll play a little something. I'm feeling much more control of what I'm doing when I play, and I feel like the tone is a bit better. Uh, the the wood's resonating well. Um, it's hard to explain really uh, what I'm feeling, but when I play it, but but I can hear the difference. I can between those. Um, and then the third bow is one I got just over a year ago, and it costs more. Than most of the three, and I think it's the best of the three. It's also the loudest. Part of that's the weight. I think that um, I think the second bow is something like what is it, 60 or 59 grams, something like that. Um, I thought it was written on there, but it's not. This one I think is 61 or two, so it's a bit heavier. And when you when you when you when you add weight, um, often you get more volume, but you, but it becomes it can be a bit unwieldy. I once had a bow that was 65 grams, and that thing was like a baseball bat. You know, you mm. wear your arm out playing it for too long, <clears throat> um, for long periods, so I got rid of that at some point, but uh, um, <clears throat> I, I, I probably don't want anything heavier than this, I think it's 62, I think that's what it is, I don't think I'd want anything heavier than this, uh, personally, um, but some people really like, like John Herod likes heavy bows, and for, because of volume, it's, it's one big reason. And somewhere around 65 would be considered a heavy bow? I think so, yeah, mm. I think so, they make them, I think they get up to more than, I'm not sure how high they go, but they, they go a bit high, a little bit higher than that. But a lot of bows are around 60, less or more. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so anyway, um, I also think this one, it just seems, I feel like I pull a good tone out of the fiddle with this bow. I really like it a lot. Um, so let's play that same tune. I just I like 
I, I still play this other bow um, I had for years. I still play it some, but um, I really like this one. It, especially if you're playing somewhere you need volume, mm -hmm. like a dance or maybe a slightly bigger jam, it helps a lot. But I, I just find my play, so I'll play it more than anything else.